Okay, no more stalling. Uh, propane is removed. Um, what I'm going to do is uh, open up the hatches, just remove the hatch covers, and then basically just cut between the hole, the hatches, and um, so the bulk of the center of the floor will come out. Then uh, I might have to cut it into a, enough small pieces that I can carry. One long cut along that side. What will happen, of course, as soon as I cut up the floor is it'll get soft and wobbly. I think it's actually sitting on the water tanks, um, as from what I can see through the hatches. Um, I take you on a tour down through the hatches, see what a mess it is under here, but you're going to find out soon enough. Nothing to be said, but get on with it. Okay. Safety first. Cross vent is a bit of a mess. Uh, I think I've determined uh, one of my problems. I'll uh, tell you about that in a minute. Well, that's properly disgusting. Uh, first, the way that the floor was originally made, sole, I apologize. Uh, you can see it was actually sitting on the freshwater tanks, the outside uh, are freshwater. Even more disgusting is the black tank in the middle, the um, holding tank. As I suspected, was leaking on the infill, and there's um, well, there's poo all over the top of the tank, and um, every once in a while, depending on the wind direction, I'd get a little whiff of that. Uh, so that's one of the things that made me really wanted to deal with this. Okay, so I got to cut up this chunk of sole into uh, something that's manageable for the dumpster. After a few minutes with a hose, I've um, slightly reduced the disgusting factor here. Um, and it allowed me to do some research and figure out what's going on. And well, I can see here that the pipe has come off down there. Um, it's just a solvent welding fitting. If I uh, feel I'm going to retain any of this, uh, that's a pretty easy fix. But what am I going to do? I really don't know right now. Um, if I pull up these tanks and all the plumbing and support that goes with it, that's a pile of work. Uh, in some ways, the tanks are plenty low that I can put new structure in for the new floor because my structure won't be any deeper than this. So I don't need to remove them to do the work. What I may need to do is remove them to do the bulkhead because the bulkhead goes right down to the bottom of the hull and uh, it's only a quarter of an inch. Well, I mean, that may be a little spacer block, half an inch max between the back of the tanks and the bulkhead. And because the bulkhead has to drop in and then slide under here, even if I take this off, it's got to slide under that part. The bulkheads are going to have to be able to be tipped back, slid down, slid in, slid over. Imagining I can do it with the tanks in place is ambitious. Does that mean maybe I try to save the bulkhead? I don't know. Anyway, more information than you want to deal with. I'm going to start to figure out how to get the rest of the floor off. Mostly that's bashing and smashing, I imagine. Ouch. Bye. Well, here we go. Ripped up the sole. What a mess. Um, probably showed you some pictures of the process. I didn't bother shooting any video because, well, it was just a mess. That's all. Okay, so... As I might have mentioned before, I'm not sure I can get the bulkhead in and out with the tank still in place. I'm not sure I like the routing of this line anyway as to um, getting some structure across there. So I think I'm going to pull the tanks. That does a bunch of things for me. It allows me to really clean out underneath and make sure I know what's going on. Have a good look at the frames, ribs in behind the uh, hard chine. Um, which what I felt with my fingers down there doesn't seem so bad. Um, and make it much easier to replace this bulkhead 
And then if I put the tanks back exactly where they are, there's no harm in that. It's kind of a neat layout, right? Because the two water tanks are um, on the sides with the, with the uh, holding tank in the middle and the water tanks are connected together. So when you fill one, they both fill. And when you drain one, they both drain so that the boat stays balanced. Uh, you know, they were thinking there. Um, they're, not, um, they're not the ideal proportion for what I was planning to do because my new sole is only gonna come to here. In other words, the, the cockpit sole will only be the center um, five feet of the cockpit. The side 18 inches or two feet is going to be uh, benches both sides, lockers in fact. But when you lift the locker, the intention was the locker would go deep right down into the bilge. So you could put deep things in there, such things as maybe folding bikes, fender, stuff like that. So um, I really did want to be able to take advantage of that space. And right now the lockers would come to here, so I'd be losing the first six inches of that. Now, having nice big water tanks is nice too. However, in the future, I fully intend to go to a water maker, thus reducing the need for a lot of tankage. Um, but I want to get too far ahead of myself. I'm getting into shipfitter's disease here. It's an expression we use in the Land Rover world where you start taking too much stuff apart. Well, here it really applies because it's, well, a boat, not a ship. Okay, so, yeah, I'm taking the tanks out. I'm taking the tanks out. Even if I put them back exactly where they are. Although I have a couple other ideas. Anyway, let's rip them out. First step, of course, is to empty them. Well, the water tanks, that's pretty straightforward. And if I don't get it all out, the water ripples out. The holding tank. Now that, I gotta make sure I get cleaned out well. So that means flushing a lot of water. Um, you can see the inch and a quarter pipe that comes all the way back from the head. Um, holds a fair amount of liquid so I'm going to flush a lot of water through and then I might take that uh, spare bung out and blast the hose in there for a while because I'm already just done with poo all right okay back. okay so it was a relatively straightforward thing to do to flush the uh, the um, holding tank we took the inlet fitting off the top blasted it with lots of fresh water uh, we're fortunate here at the marina that we have vacuum pump out so I Flushed it, flushed it, flushed it. Uh, you can't see from where you are, but I've also pried up the front end of the tank, the drains at the aft end. So make sure we got it all out. So now I'm pretty sure I can start taking these tanks out. Um, because they're mostly plumbed with PVC pipe, residential PVC pipe, that's all solvent welded, solvent welded, I'll have to cut most of it. And um, if I'm putting it back in a similar fashion, uh, it'll mean splices and stuff, although I probably once I've cut it all off, I'll probably put different kinds of fittings back on. All right, so here goes. I think I'll start with, uh, I don't know what I'll start with. I know I have to cut something. There we go. Huh. I was gonna say a cannonball, but it's a fishing weight sitting in the bilge. I'd have to say the bilge looks great. Um, certainly a lot cleaner than the stuff around the edge. That's pretty cool. Uh, these are apparently 60 gallons each. Uh, and they bought them from Husky Camper in Port Coquitlam in uh, the 26th of April, May, June, uh, 1989. It cost $199. All right, where the heck am I gonna put these? Up on the bridge deck, I imagine. One of the reasons I want to get these tanks out is, of course, to see the bilge, tide this all up, the framing, the bracing, etc. And also have a really good look at the um, timber, which is effectively the keel, where the, uh, the rudder stock goes through. Um, on my friend's boat that we were cruising on this summer, it was really badly um, punky from electrolysis and sticking my finger in around this it doesn't seem really as bad but it's something that does need to be dealt with i'll let the uh, sirens go by okay that's all this one okay last tank it's a bit pinned in uh, under the steering gear Okay, 
Time to get something to prod with. Because as I mentioned, I'm a little bit concerned about the deadwood here. A little bit punky in here, look at that. I suspected that. So I'm, another really, really good reason I took this out. I can only feel it up here where there's a block on top and it's a bit punky. I'm not too worried. But that's definitely going to need some attention. Definitely. Because these are the um, bolts that go down to the skeg for the prop. And so I've got serious electrolysis problems. I knew the bolt was chronic for that. And uh, so one of the things I'm glad I'm not ignoring any longer. All right, let's clean up a little bit more down here. The rather unglorious task of scooping all the crud in the bottom of the bilge. I've already flushed it once with water, um, but I don't have a lot of pressure, just regular domestic pressure off the garden hose, so it doesn't really clean anything. And uh, I was able to suck it all out with uh, this, which is the um, marina uh, pump out. And I've just made my own little valve at the end so that I can use it as basically a water vacuum cleaner. And uh, I'm getting pretty close to calling it a day and uh, celebrating with a beer because this has been quite a day. I'm not uh, disappointed. I'm really not. I'm actually very pleased. But um, I am going to have to spend some time thinking about how to deal with this um, bit of electrolysis corrosion. I can't dig at it. Um, too much because this timber is only about six inches deep maybe only four I have to think about it now probably closer to six I'm trying to remember how far it sticks down below the boat um, so if I dig at this too much and suddenly it's that pithy that I have a leak well the boat will sink so uh, yeah anyway not quite sure what I'm gonna do about it yet um, what I do know is that in time it's gonna need a better repair that I'm gonna be able to do to it right now because I can't get too tied up in uh, big repairs right now, regardless of how important it is, because the boat will not suffer too badly, even if I just put this all back together. But the main thing is I'm putting it back together in a way that it can come apart again quickly and easily for subsequent repairs. Wooden boats are always gonna need work. So on the whole, once this is cleaned up and looking spiffy, um, I am going to figure out what particular combination of tanks I'm going to use, take out the old steering, uh, do something temporarily about the uh, electrolysis rot here, and uh, get the tanks back in and start framing the floor. You'll be here for all of it. Cheers. Cheers.